Hey guys, it's Jessica Miller Merrill and welcome to this week. It's a little later, but for the Positivity Power Hour. I'm Jessica Miller Merrill. I'm the founder of Morphology and we started the Positivity Power Hour because we want to be to give you at least one hour of, pos of positivity into your week while we are sheltering in place and all in this a crazy pandemic together. So I'm trying to bring a little sunshine into your week. I feel like Thursday for me is the hardest. It's also my busiest work week part of the of the week. I'm heading into the weekend, but it doesn't really feel like there's a weekend at all happening right now. Um, it's a lot of a lot of days, uh, a lot of things at home, and um, this is I think week five or week six that um, we're in right now. So. Um, this week is a little bit different. Uh, we've had musicians on, we've had mental health experts, we've had therapists, and we thought this time, this week, we would have some restorative yoga. Um, so if you are around and available, I would love for you to pull out a mat or participate. I've got my mat down here. Um, but I'm joined by Christy Gross. And she is a, a yoga um, instructor located in Austin, Texas, uh, where I live. So uh, Christy, welcome to the Positivity Power Hour. Hi, thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, I was, I'm really excited. I, I've known Lauren for a while, and she messaged me and asked um, if I'd like to do yoga. And so I actually suggested restorative. A lot of my students have been talking about stress um, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Um, people are adjusting to kind of a new normal as well as their bodies are perhaps more sedentary um, than what they're typically used to. So restorative yoga is amazing for all those aspects. We're gonna do some gentle stretching and opening up, a lot of breath focus. Um, so just really learning to use our breath as a tool to let go. So I, my, my goal here is to hopefully teach you a few things that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis um, to just relax your body, mind, and spirit and get a little more connected. With restorative yoga, there is a link that Lauren um, put up in the chat to a playlist that I put together. You're welcome to listen to whatever you'd like. Um, you're also welcome to open up the Spotify playlist if you'd like to join along. Um, with restorative yoga, everything's going to be done on the mat. So props are awesome. You don't have to have a mat. You can just curl up on the floor. Uh, pretty much whatever's comfortable. We're not going to be doing standing postures where you need kind of a sticky mat. So just relaxing on the ground. Um, grab some pillows, either off your couch or um, your bed, some blocks. If you don't have blocks, I have a couple of blocks located here. If you don't have blocks, you can also uh, take rolled up towels or blankets. Um, having a strap, a bath, a, a bathrobe tie works or a, just an actual necktie works for a strap as well. So take a quick moment and just gather some props so that way you can just lounge, relax. Uh, for those that want to have any kind of a beverage, tea, wine, uh, whatever you like, grab one and then let's meet on the mat. Awesome, so I will be shutting off my um, video here um, so that we can, we don't wanna see me to be doing yoga. We wanna learn from, from Christy. Um, this is restorative yoga. So um, re however you choose to restore. I went ahead and got myself a glass of Chardonnay because I thought, you know what? I have worked really hard this week. We just got done with a webinar here. It's been a long one. Uh, however you want to unwind, that is completely up to you. Um, I'll let Christy go ahead and take over. I've um, put the Spotify playlist also on the Facebook Live. You can um, check that out. And then also, um, Christy is a, a yoga instructor. And if you like what she's doing uh, and you want to support her as a small business, independent business herself, I also have her Venmo uh, that we've included there as well. And you can send her a donation for her time. So Christy, I'm going to shut off my uh, camera and mic and I'll let you take it away, okay? Great, thank you. All right, so I hope everybody has their props. Again, blankets, pillows. I've got a, kind of an assortment here. So 
So restorative yoga is also really good for pretty much a variety um, of skill sets, ages, um, whether you have any injuries, ailments, pregnancy, anything like that, restorative is gonna be good for you. So find a comfortable position, seated. You're welcome to sit on the pillow, whatever you like. But find a seated position where you can get nice and rooted down. Tall spine. If you find yourself kind of rounding your back, sit on the edge of the pillow and roll the pelvis forward so you can have a nice tall spine. Close your eyes. You can push play if you're joining me on the playlist. We're just going to check in. We're going to start connecting inward. You're welcome to take a hand to your belly and another hand to your heart. Inhaling, expand your belly, expand the hand. Let the breath roll up into the chest. Finally lifting the upper hand, your upper lungs. When you exhale, contract the belly. Letting the breath roll out. So you're creating this rippling effect. Everything is initiating. Your inhales and exhales are initiating in the belly. And the breath is rolling up into the lungs and rolling out of the lungs. So that's going to actually utilize the most lung capacity. Settle in. Focus on your inhales. Letting the breath roll up. Slow releasing exhalation. Feeling yourself opening and expanding with each breath in. Each inhale is an opportunity to bring in some space into the body to create some peace. And every exhale helps you to release something. So you can decide mentally, physically, emotionally what you want to let go of. Use your exhales to soften your shoulders, soften your eyes and your face. Inhaling, opening up, bringing in peace. Exhale, letting everything release. Take about 10 breaths, moving through. Of quotes that I have for y'all. A lot of my students have been really talking about just this heaviness that they've been feeling. Not so much physically, but a mental and emotional heaviness of just kind of the shift and changes in our life. So while you're breathing, just tune in and listen. You will find that it is necessary to let things go, simply for the reason that they are heavy. So you're using your breath to create this lightness with each inhale, this openness. You're using your exhale to let everything melt away. Few more breaths. Two students that'll be periodically popping in to join me. Your exhales help to soften your shoulders. Taking this weight off of the shoulders, allowing the spine to grow tall. Five 
five more breaths. You can allow a gentle softness in the back of your throat with your breath, almost creating this kind of snoring wave-like sound. It's called the Ujjayi breath. It's very calming to your nervous system. One more deep inhale. Fill your lungs. And as you exhale, just flutter your eyes open to a soft gaze. If you have one leg on top, we'll be switching it in just a moment. Just kind of pay attention to which one is on top. Inhale, arms reach up. As you exhale, rotate to the right. Inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale, rotate, leading from the base of the spine, working your way up. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate, moving into the mid spine. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate, getting into the upper spine. One more, inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate, pause here. Two more breaths. Inhale, lifting arms back up. Exhale, release. Sitting on the right hand, slight tuck of the chin. You're trying to extend through the back of the neck. Left arm comes up and over. Draw the left ear down. Sorry, my little, my little furry students for wanting to participate. Drawing the left ear down. Remember, don't lift the chin out. Keep the chin slightly tucked just to protect the back of the neck. Lifting tall with the spine. Gently drawing the left ear down. Keeping the ear towards the shoulder, move the nose down towards the mouth. Feeling how the stretch actually shifts, getting different muscles throughout the neck. Where you feel the most tightness, pause there. Five breaths. Taking a breath in, big releasing exhale out. Chin comes up to that center point, continuing to keep the ear over, lifting the nose towards the sky. Once more, noticing how the stretch shifts. Notice which muscles feel the tightest. Pausing there, just breathing in. Going back to the inhales, bringing in that opening, that space. And your exhales, releasing, allowing your muscles to just melt. Take another breath in. And as you exhale, return to that center point. Release the head, roll through the shoulders, perhaps the neck rolls. Just kind of lift your leg up so you can bring it as close to the body as you'd like or as far out. We're just creating a little bit of movement throughout the hip joint. Just getting a little fluidity going. And then switch, bring the other leg on top. Settling back in. Inhale, 
arms reach up. Exhale, rotate to the left. Slight tuck of the chin into the chest. Inhale to lift through the crown of the head. Exhale, rotate from the base of the spine, working your way up. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate. Working up into the mid spine. Using your breath here. Working into the upper spine. Twists are amazing, not only to help release muscles, but they're phenomenal for your digestion as well. Good for spine and digestion. Whenever you've reached your max, pause for two breaths. Inhale, lifting back up. Exhale, release. Sitting on the left hand. Once more, slight tuck of the chin. Right arm comes up and over, drawing the right ear down towards the shoulder. Just pay attention how one side feels versus the other. If you tend to be on the phone a lot or do things more right-handed, you may feel a little tighter actually on the left side. If you have tight neck, this is something you want to do every single day. Just take a few minutes. It really will make a difference if you have some diligence with this. Starting to draw the nose down towards the floor. Noticing where stretch intensifies. Pausing there just to breathe and release. you exhale, nose returns to the center point, and then shifts to look towards the sky. Once more, noticing where the stretch intensifies, pausing and breathing there. Take a breath in. She exhale, return to the center point. Another breath or two. Releasing the neck. Once more, some shoulder rolls both directions. Neck rolls both directions. If you find yourself hunched forward a lot on a computer, on your phone, looking down, it's a really good opener. It helps to actually help release the nerves that run through this shoulder joint here all the way up into the neck. So if you have carpal tunnel, um, tightness in your neck, something you want to do every day. Lift the leg up. Once more, just rock, creating a little bit of opening throughout the hip. And release. Bringing the soles of the feet together. You can bring them in as close as it's comfortable for you. If you would like to take blankets and roll them up to support your knees, please feel free to. Towels work as well. You can also just allow gravity to do the trick. Make sure that you're not rolling back 
Keep the pelvis slightly coming forward. This helps you to lift the head up. You're never trying to press the knees down. You're actually rolling the pelvis forward, and that allows the knees to drop down. Big stretch into the inner thighs. And grab some pillows and curl forward, tucking chin to the chest. Feel free to really prop yourself up. going to be here for several breaths. I'm going to remain in an upright position just for better audio. But allow yourself to curl down, soles of the feet are together, pelvis is coming forward, rounding down into the support. We're just breathing here, going back to those slow, Opening inhalations. And those slow, full exhalations. Releasing the hips can actually help release the low back. Going back to releasing the shoulders and neck. Softening the face and the eyes. Any thoughts that have been feeling heavy, stressful, use your breath to let them melt away. Bodies store tension by helping to release our bodies, focusing with our breath. We are actually on a steep cellular level, helping to create a new pattern of releasing. As you're rounding forward, notice how the breath is focused more in the back of the lungs. Really take full inhales to expand through the back, feeling the muscles between each rib open up. Forward folds very calming to your nervous system. Our bodies reside in two modes, parasympathetic mode and sympathetic mode. We're designed to live in parasympathetic mode. That's the rest and digest. That's when our bodies are restoring, repairing, um, utilizing nutrients from food more efficiently. When we are in a go, go, go pace, feeling stress, our bodies are switching into the sympathetic mode. Hormones shift, cortisol production increases. Our bodies are actually tensing up, our muscles are tensing up to prepare us for fright or flight. Um, our bodies were designed to only live in that moment temporarily. Um, back in the day, whether we were hunting down food or running from something, our bodies would tense up. Our core shuts down, our digestion shuts down. So we're in this mode of fleeing. Unfortunately, with our day-to-day -day routines, we're often living more in that sympathetic mode. So we're not really giving our bodies a chance to find that balance, that homeostasis, and really repair, get deep restorative sleep, allow our hormones to balance out, allow our digestion to be at its optimal performance. This is an opportunity for you to really help reset your body, like I said, on a deep cellular level. Take five more breaths.
One more unhurried breath in. Big releasing exhale out. Lift your torso back up. Just move any pillows out of the way. You can help the knees together. Perhaps some windshield wipers. Taking some pillows and stacking them. We're going to go into restorative fish pose. Once more, we spend a lot of our time hunching forward on our cell phones, looking down a lot on the keyboards. So we're often not opening up in an opposite direction to really help balance the spine and release through the neck and shoulders. So ramp, I love having a lot of props during restorative. The more the better. People always tease me in my classes. We have things written out, you know, three bolsters, four blocks, things like that. So take some rolled up blankets or pillows underneath your knees. Have your pillows right at the base of the spine. You're wanting to lift the spine up open through the chest. If you want additional cervical support, you can take a small towel or blanket rolled up underneath your neck. You want to make sure you don't feel pinching in the neck. Open out here. Really spread your wings. Don't have arms down by your side. Take up some space. This is known as a restorative fish pose. So we're sitting here with our legs just lengthened out. You also have an option to bring soles of the feet back in if you want some additional release in the inner thighs and the hips. And that's known as restorative butterfly. So either one. Notice how the breath is opening up through the front of the lungs now, as opposed to the back of the lungs a moment ago. The belly is expanding here. The breath is rolling up through the chest. The heart is open. The shoulders are open. This is a really good posture as well for women's health, for our breast health. It's good for your lymphatic drainage. From a chakra standpoint, an energy standpoint, it helps to open up stomach, digestion, heart, and your lungs. So this is really good for your immune health. So it's all good right now for us to be boosting our immunity. This is a great one for that. It's really good for your lungs as well as your thyroid. It opens up the throat. Going to breathe in deep. This position, from a biological standpoint in nature, a lot of our key organs are really open and exposed the heart, the throat the intestines, it's a very vulnerable position. It can take strength to actually tap into vulnerability, to truly allow yourself to be vulnerable. So give yourself permission right now tap into vulnerability. Once again, it is a strength to feel that, to allow yourself those places. From vulnerability comes strength. I like to think of 
of, of it also being as a sense of resiliency. Another quote. Resilience means that you feel, you fail, you hurt, you fall, but you keep going. So allowing ourselves to grow, tap into that inner strength. here for about another 10 to 12 slow breaths. Feel this opening and expansion coming into the chest. Feel this lightness that you're breathing in. Feel the surrendering and melting your shoulders, your spine, as it just melts into the grounding of the pillows. Let go. you to add this posture in at the end of your work day. When you head home, just take a few minutes breathing in this position to help counter all of the forward folding to help open you up. One more breath in. Big releasing exhale out. Lift your torso back up. Coming up to a seated position. Just doing a nice little counter stretch. Hinge forward. The nice forward fold. This time our legs are extended out in front. Feel free to grab fillet, the pillows or blanket forward. Curl down. We're just going to hold this for a few more breaths. Just doing a nice stretch throughout the entire length of the spine as well as the hamstrings and calves. You can also take blankets out of the way if you want to go a little deeper. Breath in, <sighs> releasing, exhale out. Come back up to a seated position, moving into a nice hip opener. Depending on your flexibility, and this is known as pigeon, also known as sleeping swan in the yin practice. So you may want to have a couple of pillows handy. Come into a tabletop. 
stacking shoulders over your wrist and hips over your knees. Just move through some cat cows as you inhale, belly drops, chest and tailbone lift. As you exhale, scoop your belly in, rounding through your spine, moving with the own rhythm of your breath through cat cows. Just creating some space in the spine before we move into our hip raises. One more round. Meeting your tabletop, bring your right leg forward. Sweep your calf through it. So once more, bringing your right knee forward, sweep that leg through and lengthen your left leg back. So already if you're sitting here thinking, wow, this is really intense on my hips. Take your pillows or your blanket and place it underneath. This will help you from rolling off to the left side. You want it to keep both hips facing forward. Take a moment and lift up through the crown of the head, opening through the front hip flexors first. And then as you exhale, you can relax down, just allowing yourself to completely surrender and melt. Close your eyes. Gonna hold and breathe in this position. This gets into your entire glute, outer hip, even into the low back. This also releases the front of your hips, the hip flexors, on the other side, the left side. Your hip flexors can get really tight from sitting down a lot, which can actually pull on your low back. So once more, just surrender down. Just breathe and be here. If you notice with your breath that you are holding tension, sometimes when a posture can be a little challenging for us if we um, maybe don't have as much flexibility, we're trying to ask our bodies to open up, we tend to tense up, to hold ourselves up as a guardian. See if you can release, soften the shoulders from tensing up. Allow everything to just let go. Got a big bright sunlight beam going in. <laughs> going back to the quote we had at the beginning of class, you will find that it is necessary to let things go simply for the reason that they are heavy. Adding on to that, if you want to fly, you have to release what weighs you down. So it is these emotional burdens, these thoughts that are weighing us down, mentally and emotionally. This is your opportunity. If you've had something challenging happen this week, take a moment, reflect on the lessons, Take the lessons with you. Exhale and let the rest go. It's like you're unpacking that extra baggage. Allow yourself to be more free, to travel lighter, and fly and soar. Five more breaths. Taking a deep breath in, 
Big exhale out. Lift your torso back up. Move any pillows that are beneath you. Come back into a tabletop position. Going through cat cows with the rhythm of your breath. Inhaling, belly drops, chest and tailbone lift. Exhale, rounding through the back into cat. Just move through cat cows. Just resetting the spine. You can also do seated cat cows while you're at your chair. Just take it a quick moment while you're sitting, if you're on the phone or at the computer, just moving your seated cat cows. Creating some expansion and flexion in the spine. Open up one more round. Returning to a seated position, other side. Left knee comes forward, swoop the leg through. Right leg extends back. Feel free to take any pillows or blankets beneath the left hip, just to ensure that you're not rolling out to the side to keep both hips facing forward. Grab pillows, blankets, whatever you want to melt down. Allowing this side to open up equally with the other side. Going back to our quote on resiliency. At any given moment, you have two options. To tap into the resiliency, to step forward into growth, or you can step back into safety. Think about unpacking that baggage, that heaviness. Moving forward with the lessons, allowing yourself to grow, to learn, to fall, to stand up again. Or you can go back into the weighted heaviness where there's safety. But you're limiting yourself from spreading your wings and falling. Let everything relax down. I'm just keeping more upright for obvious sake. your torso back up. Take it back this time into a child's pose. 
Big toes are touching, knees are spreading, and allow your hips to go back, arms reach forward. If you'd like to increase the opening in the shoulders, grab your blocks. Once more, you can take rolled up towels. That also works. Hands come onto the blocks. Going into child pose, your tailbone is melting back. Your fingertips are inching forward. Resting forehead on the mat if it's comfortable. Take a moment, rocking right shoulder, then left shoulder into the mat. Just creating a rocking to open up through the shoulders. This also helps to release tension in the neck and shoulders. Adding on to the stretch, take your right hand, threading underneath your body, coming onto the right ear and cheek. This is a thread the needle child's pose combination. This helps to release tension throughout the back of the shoulders in through the deltoid. You're sitting back on your hips in child's pose. Your left arm remains stretched out in front of you on the blocks. Take five more breaths. Your next inhale, return your right hand back to the mat or the block, returning to a child's pose position. Once more, rock right shoulder, then left shoulder onto the mat. Coming to stillness. Take a breath in, release the left hand from the block. Slide it underneath the body, taking it through. Coming onto the left ear and cheek. Once more, lengthen your tailbone back. So you're in this child's pose, the red and needle combination here to open up the back of the shoulders to the deltoids. Help to release a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders. The right arm remains lengthened out. Reaching for that block. Close your eyes. Just breathe, open up, and let go. Another breath in. Exhale, returning left hand to the block, back into the child's bed. Taking one last breath in. Big exhale out. Coming up onto all fours, move onto your back. You can have a pillow underneath your neck now for a little cervical support. Have your other pillows handy as well as your strap. Shh. 
Curling onto your back. Hug your knees in. Roll through your ankles. Take your strap beneath your toes. So you want to make sure it's not at the middle of the foot. You want it right beneath your toes. Lengthen your heels up as you pull the toes down, creating a nice release throughout your calves and your hamstrings. If you're sitting down a lot, your hamstrings are getting nice and short. This helps as you create some length. Another breath here. As you exhale, keep the right foot in, extend the left leg down. Here you're slightly pressing the left thigh into the mat to ground you as you're pulling the toes down to the right foot. Make sure you're not tensing your upper body. The strap is an extension of your arms. So lengthen arms all the way out. Taking the straps now in the left hand, pivot over, bringing this right leg all the way down to the mat. If you need to take a pillow and stack it underneath your leg, you're welcome to. Now inhale, reaching right arm. Exhale, rainbow arc it. Back over to the right side, drawing the right shoulder down. This is a nice spinal twist. We're opening up through our intestines, our spine, throughout our IT band, our glutes. Ten breaths here. Try to relax the right shoulder down. breath in. As you exhale, return to your back, taking the straps in both arms. One more breath here. Exhale out. Left leg joins the right. Pulling the toes down and release right leg down. Grounding that right thigh into the mat as you're pulling the toes down, lengthening the heel up. Just pause here for a few breaths. If you're a runner or a cycler, this is also really good to help release the IT band when we go to when we twist to the side. This releases the hamstrings and calves as well. Breath in. As you exhale, strap goes into the right hand. Pivot all the way over, drawing the left leg to the right side. You're extending through your leg, opening through the IT band, the glute, the hips, the low back. Left arm inhales and reaches. Exhale, rainbow arc it over to the left. Draw the left shoulder down. 
twist. Two fine spinal twist here. Releasing. Think of your little inhales lengthening through the spine. Exhales rotating you. Ten breaths. Continue relaxing that left shoulder down. Taking one more breath in. As you exhale, return to your back. Taking the straps once more in both arms for another couple of breaths. Right leg joins the left once more. Deep inhale. As you exhale, release the straps, bend the knees. Grabbing the balls of the feet, going into a happy baby. Happy baby, you're taking legs out, pulling the knees down, tendency to let the tailbone lift. Try to melt that tailbone back down to really open up here. Perhaps rock a little side to side. Take one more breath in. As you exhale, lengthen the body out. Grab your pillows, your blankets. Grab any props that you want underneath your neck, your back, giving yourself support. And we prepare ourselves for a relaxation pose, Shavasana. Shavasana is such, such an important posture. It helps your body integrate all the positions, the opening that you just did to really kind of take it in on a cellular level. Making your way down, tapping into your breath. Inhaling, opening and releasing. Exhale, just melting down. People often think of relaxation as a luxury. It's actually a necessity. One of my favorite analogies is the oak tree. The oak tree is one of the strongest, most durable, long, longest lasting trees. If you cut a center section of an oak tree and study the growth rings, you will see periods of dormancy, of rest. During that time of dormancy, the roots grow deep into the soil to really tap into nourishment in periods of growth where the tree spreads its branches, gets nice and thick with leaves. The dormancy periods allow the, the tree nourishment, deeper rooted system for better growth. This time that we're in, these periods of rest, are integral for your growth. It is not a luxury, it is a necessity.
returning to your breath, returning to the rise and fall of each inhale and each exhale. Keeping your eyes closed, your attention focused inward. It's going to take approximately five breaths to arrive at a seated position. For those that want to lounge a little longer, Stay relaxed, no, no need to meet me in a seated position. For those that want to close out their practice, take about five breaths to meet. Hands at heart center, eyes closed, attention inward on your breath. All taking one deep breath in. Exhale, just bowing your head to your heart. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope your bodies and minds feel a little more relaxed. And I hope you learned some tools that you can use with you throughout the day to keep a little bit more relaxation in your mind. Keep everything a little more open and flowing. Be kind to yourselves, be kind to each other. Namaste. Thank y'all so much. Um, for those that are interested in, um, in ever joining me for, for future classes, you're welcome to um, I think either message me on Facebook. I, I'm part of the, the Facebook group, so you're welcome to message me. Um, also, my email is yogagirl514, as well as my Instagram handle. And uh, I can let you know of other classes that I offer. Thank you so much. Christy, um, you can connect with Christy. Donations are welcome for Venmo too. I've, I've put this up on, on Facebook, but if you're on Venmo, it's K-R-I-S-T-I-514. I feel so much better. Um, I really need <laughs> this. Thank you. This, is, this has been fantastic. I, I appreciate you taking the time to walk us through this. Um, I didn't know how much I needed it until I got about 15 minutes in and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. So um, just remind everybody. So thank you, Christy. Uh, this concludes our weekly positivity power hour. I'm Jessica Miller Merrill, the founder of Workology. I'm excited to, to have you guys here. It's weekly on Thursdays, normally at two, but we figured we needed to wind down a little bit later today uh, for the restorative yoga. We'll be back next week. And uh, my friend, Baranda Bellamy, she's going to be talking about telehealth and how we can leverage that to keep our minds and bodies uh, in the right place and always be able to have someone to talk to. So thank you so much. Thank you to Christy. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next <laughs> week, guys. Bye.